Okay. Welcome to the Sill family plot. Ooh. Please, Sorry about this. everyone, <laughs> calm down. <laughs> down. <laughs> uh, my name is Elijah B. Mather. Uh, my grandfather, Dr. Elijah Mather, came to Sotus in 1810. He came here from Old Saybrook, Connecticut, and originally settled along the Salmon, Salmon Creek, uh, just north of the ridge. And a short time after he moved here, he decided that he wanted to invest in property in the area. And so he bought a large tract of land. Uh, that tract of land started in what became known as Soda Center. It went along the Salmon Creek and the other boundary was nearly to the Lyons town line. It was a very large tract of land. Uh, my grandfather practiced medicine for 30 years in Sotus. He was one of the pioneer medical men in this area. Uh, when he moved, to, he uh, decided that when he bought the tract of land in Sotus Center that he needed to build a house. And so he, he built a large frame house, and in 1821, he moved his family into that house. That house still stands today. Uh, in Soda Center, he built a sawmill, a grist mill, and a wool carting mill. And those businesses remained intact for three generations of the Mather family. Uh, my grandfather died in 1848 at the age of 63 and rests in the burial grounds behind St. John's Episcopal Church in the Sotus Village. My father, also named Elijah Mather, was born in Sotus in 1817. He became an attorney and had a very successful practice in the city of Rochester. Uh, while he was in Rochester, he got to know many of the prominent citizens, um, one of which he built our city house across the street from Thomas Rochester, who at one time was mayor and was also a son of Nathaniel Rochester, for whom Rochester is named. Uh, another neighbor of ours in the city was George Washington Eastman. George Washington Eastman founded Eastman's Commercial College, which eventually became Rochester Business Institute, or RBI. George Washington Eastman was also the father of George Eastman the founder of Eastman Kodak Company. George and I were fast friends growing up as children. We spent lots of days having adventures in the city of Rochester, and we maintained that friendship until George passed away in 1932. <coughs> My father retired from his law practice in the early 1870s and moved back to the ancestral home in Soda Center that his father had built. While he was here, he focused on the milling businesses that his father had created and made them more successful. My father died in 1877 from Bright's disease at the age of 60 years. I was born in Rochester in 1851. I had a very interesting childhood, very, a very fortunate childhood. I, um, I, had, I, I had very interesting times in the city, um, but when my father retired in the early 1870s, I of course moved with the family back to Soda Center. By that time I was I was old enough to participate in the family businesses, and so 
I became quite familiar with the milling business when fruit started to become more prevalent in this area it was decided that the sawmill would be closed and abandoned the grist mill and carding mill was converted into a large fruit evaporator from that fruit evaporator we shipped massive amounts of dried apples and berries to all parts of this country and even to Europe we took well advantage of the new Sodas Point and Southern Railroad that had recently been passing through Soda Center. And so we were able to load rail cars and from there our product could be shipped anywhere. I also opened a, a very large lime kiln in Kelsiana, just down the railroad track from Soda Center. Uh, again, we uh, shipped massive amounts of burned lime throughout the country. And these businesses were very successful for many years until unfortunately around 1906, I made a, a very bad business decision. Um, I had decided that it would be a great idea to make contracts with fruit buyers in advance of the crop. I anticipated the, the volume of the crop based on early early fruit set and sold a lot of fruit we had a late frost and it completely destroyed the crop in order to satisfy those contracts I needed to buy and ship fruit from as far away as Canada the cost of securing that fruit broke me I sold the businesses, sold the property, sold our ancestral home. Fortunately, was able to keep one small house that I had built for my mother and contacted my old friend, George Eastman, who offered me a job. So my wife and I moved to Rochester and I worked for Eastman Kodak Company for a few years but I never did relish the idea of working for someone else and left to come back to Soda Center, moved into the house that we had built for my mother, and I built a small garage and machine shop next to it and operated a small repair business. Until 1922, when I was vulcanizing rubber, the building caught fire I severely burned one arm. The building and its contents were completely destroyed, as was the neighboring St. Luke's Episcopal Church that my family had graciously donated the land and donated funds to build. The church eventually was rebuilt and I rebuilt my machine shop and operated it until ill health forced me to close it. Over the years, I used my my mechanical abilities to, to build things. Um, in 1902, I built a steam automobile. I believe it was the first such vehicle in SOTUS. I developed a, 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 ra a small railroad system at the lime kiln, which was used to transport rock, limestone from the quarry to the kiln. I developed a, an apparatus that would show the wind direction from inside a building. I, I built a machine that ground, that reground engine cylinders. And I also developed something that I called the Mather Patent. It was a small machine that grinds out the center of drill bits. And this is one of those machines. My life certainly had ups and downs, mm -hmm. highs and lows. Mm -hmm. And now I rest here comfortably, except for when I come out occasionally to see what's happening in my beloved Soda Center.
I passed away in February of 1945 in Lyons Hospital at the age of 93. Oh, wow. It's nice to see some of